When most people think of drone warfare, they are likely to envision something like a sleek and stealthy General Atomics MQ-1 Predator gliding above the skies of Afghanistan and obliterating terrorist enclaves with Hellfire missiles. Others, having paid attention to the war in Ukraine, may think of tiny quadcopters buzzing low through empty streets before deploying improvised explosive payloads on unsuspecting targets. Still others might cast their minds back to World War II and fascinating but destructive novelties like the Goliath radio-controlled mine and Fritz X guided bomb. On the other hand, it is extremely unlikely that anyone will call to mind a slightly dumpy, roughly waist-high piece of Serbian engineering, designed to innocuously trundle around the battlefield until called upon to make its presence known with twin-mounted anti-tank rocket launchers. Yet, with a population of just under 6.7 million and a tragic history of violent conflicts during the breakup of Yugoslavia, Serbia has always had tremendous incentive to embrace military automation. That's why, in this video, we'll be covering the Milos remotely controlled unmanned platform and, by extension, the various prototypes leading up to its limited mass production. But before we get into the technical details, it's important to emphasize this is an experimental vehicle with a lot of classified information surrounding it. This section will therefore be at least somewhat speculative and may soon become outdated as the design is iterated upon. That said, the Milos is 0.95 meters tall, between 1.7 and 1.87 meters long, and between 0.77 and 0.96 meters wide, with these last two dimensions varying with equipment and configuration. In many ways, the Milos is the resurrection of a much older project, the Militsa, which was a remotely controlled weapon system prototyped in the late 2000s by the Yugwimport company, one of Serbia's largest military manufacturers. Yugwimport was a prolific innovator in this field at the time, prototyping many different drone systems for different tasks. The Militsa was their attempt to create a true multi-role system, able to act as a small transport vehicle, a forward scout, and a weapons platform that could engage light fortifications and even main battle tanks. Although very ambitious, the Militsa only made it to a functional prototype before being mothballed due to the lack of demand. But the Serbians were not ones to waste a good idea, and the chasse of the Militsa would be selected for a modernization program sometime in 2016. The exact details of this program are unknown, but included substantial efforts to increase the platform's versatility and modularity. While the original was armed with two anti-tank rocket launchers suitable for engaging armoured targets, anti-infantry capabilities were non-existent. To address this, the superstructure was redesigned and tested with a variety of different armaments, eventually settling on a machine gun and grenade launcher combo. The tests also revealed potential improvements to the suspension, a critical component on a lightweight vehicle that would see a lot of action in rough conditions. The six small road wheels on the original design were removed and replaced with four much larger ones, and these were later altered further by moving the drive sprocket to the rear and placing the idler wheel in the front. During 2017, the Militsa received a major change that would solidify its transformation into the Milos. After years of militarization efforts, the vehicle's bulky superstructure was successfully removed, leaving only the turret poking out above the tracks. It was this version that would be unveiled to the public during Serbian military exercises known as Steel 2017. Pictures taken of this Milos prototype reveal the presence of a rear-mounted transmission, while the radio, electric motor, and other equipment needed to power the main weapon systems have been compartmentalized inside the hull. Observational data is collected using two turret cameras, one front-mounted and one rear-mounted. A pair of towing hooks are also present at either end of the vehicle. The chassis appears to be of welded construction, but features several plates secured by screws. These presumably cover the electronics and can be removed for easier maintenance. 
Mobility-wise, the Milos improves greatly on its predecessor thanks to the redesigned suspension system and rubberized tracks. This, in combination with its electric motor and low profile, make the vehicle remarkably stealthy, able to quietly sneak through soft cover and set up ambush positions. With a ground clearance of about 20 centimeters and suspension able to reach a vertical elevation of 25 degrees or a horizontal elevation of 20 degrees, the Milos can even enter buildings and climb stairs, as well as cross trenches up to 2.5 meters wide. Details regarding armor thickness for any variant are unknown, but it is generally described as being able to resist small arms fire from calibers such as 7.62 by 39mm or 5.56 by 45mm NATO. The Milos houses a set of lithium ion batteries outputting between 60 to 84 volts, giving it a maximum speed of around 4.3 miles per hour. This is reasonably impressive for a vehicle that weighs about 650 kilograms, though it does mean the battery life varies greatly depending on activity level. If called upon to scout ahead of conventional forces, the Milos might be out of power in under three hours, while stationary observation can be performed for at least eight hours. In a further testimony to Serbian military ingenuity despite relatively limited resources, the turret of the Milos is a modified copy of the existing remote control combat station for armoured vehicles developed by the Serbian Military Technical Institute and PPT. Like the hull, the turret underwent several modifications throughout the development process. When the project was first initiated, the intention was for the platform to engage targets at ranges up to about 800 metres. For these purposes, a single 7.62M-86 machine gun formed the primary armament and was supplemented by a 40mm grenade launcher. For a while, Serbian engineers seemed somewhat at a loss as to where exactly to fit these weapons, as the machine gun was initially placed entirely within the turret, then moved further to the front of the vehicle. Likewise, the 500 round ammo box was first placed right next to the machine gun in a direct feed configuration. However, this was later altered completely and the whole turret housing considerably enlarged, with the ammunition stowage turning sideways and linked to the machine gun by a guiding rail. The M-86 itself is a simple gas-operated electrically driven light machine gun with a long history of usage on mounted vehicles. The grenade launcher, on the other hand, is an unknown model and features a six-round drum magazine. On the original smaller turret, the grenade launcher was completely exposed and was later redesigned to fit just behind the machine gun, where it benefits from additional shielding. When an extra punch is needed, the Milos can also mount a pair of 64mm M80 WESP rocket-propelled anti-tank grenades. Although outdated by modern standards, the M80 can still penetrate up to 300mm of homogeneous armour while weighing in at a mere 3 kilograms. The simple, rugged design of the launchers also makes it possible for them to be mounted on the Milos without interfering with its standard loadout, giving it options for dealing with a variety of light and heavy targets at most ranges. One major drawback of the current Milos design is that the weapons are linked together and incapable of independent target acquisition. Thus, if engaged by multiple different targets at the time, the operator will have to prioritize each for elimination individually rather than launch rockets at a vehicle while suppressing infantry with the machine gun. It remains to be seen if stacking up to three weapon systems on such a small vehicle is actually viable and not just a marketing ploy. On the bright side, the turret is very mobile, featuring a full 360 degree rotational range, a maximum elevation of 50 degrees and a maximum depression of 15 degrees. The traverse speed is similarly adjustable, ranging from 0.05 degrees a second for fine tuning to a blistering 48 degrees per second. To aid in target acquisition, the cameras on the Milos are capable of a 30 times zoom, letting operators easily spot enemy soldiers a mile or so away. There is also a night vision and infrared camera with a 4 times zoom, plus a laser rangefinder that can quickly measure distances of up to 1.2 miles. Gun accuracy is further improved by a meteorological sensor, which provides such details as wind speed and an azimuth indicator for easy fire correction. 
But all these toys aren't much use if the Milos isn't being handled by a competent operator, who can interface with the platform via either a fixed remote control panel in the command vehicle or a portable version that can be hand carried. Possibly mindful of the potential shenanigans that can and will inevitably stem from the legendary Slavic and Balkan affinity for alcohol, the control panel has been made as rugged and intuitive to use as possible. When direct line of sight with the platform is possible, the Milos can maintain communication with its operator at ranges of up to 1.8 miles. Under less than optimal conditions, this figure is halved and, in a non-visual situation, reduces further to around 500 meters. Following numerous trials, the PPT was able to prototype an additional two variants of the Milos platform in 2021. The first was focused on increasing the firepower and performance, while the second stripped back many of these features and turned the Milos into a logistical support system capable of transporting equipment, ammunition, or even wounded soldiers. As of the time of writing, both of these variants are still in testing, with only a few units operational. The first, and arguably more exciting of these variants, is dubbed the Milos V2, with the original retroactively marked as the V1 for the sake of clarity. In most aspects, the V2 is a direct upgrade from the V1, incorporating numerous modifications, additions, and improvements. Externally, the most obvious change is the suspension, which has gained an extra road wheel, increasing the total to 5. The power plant and battery system have been upgraded as well, enabling the vehicle to zip around at up to 9.3 miles an hour, despite an extra 100 pounds of additional weight. Much of this weight is added by the new weaponry, which includes a 12.7mm heavy machine gun and a pair of 9cm M79 anti-tank rocket launchers. These are a vast improvement on the outdated M80 WESP launchers mounted on the V1, being able to penetrate an extra 100mm of homogeneous armour at ranges of up to 650 meters. Reports indicate that further upgrades are planned, with the dumbfire rockets scheduled to be replaced by Cornet missile launchers. The second variant of the Milos V1 is far less glamorous, having been designed as an unarmed support and supply vehicle. With the turret removed and the free space converted into a stowage bin, the Milos L or Milos Logistic can transport up to 200 kilograms of equipment or a wounded soldier in relative safety behind a heavy-duty armored shield. It can also tow a similar weight behind it, although it is unclear if it can do both at once. While hardly a headline-grabbing piece of drone technology, the merits of the Milos L obviously lie in its ability to save on manpower during combat operations. A crude ambulance driving onto the battlefield to rescue a fallen soldier just puts more men in danger, while a Milos L can simply be loaded up and driven back to base at no risk to its remote operator, while simultaneously being a lot cheaper to maintain and deploy. Speaking of costs, it's estimated that V1 of the Milos platform costs about €120,000, while the V2 costs €200,000. This is quite a reasonable sum for such a versatile system, being not substantially more than the sum needed to train, equip and pay a regular soldier for a full service term in the Serbian Armed Forces. Given that a Milos can be repaired easily and safely relied upon not to experience battlefield trauma, divided loyalties, or a sudden loss of bladder control when under heavy fire, the average lifetime value of the system likely outweighs its upfront costs. Showing its faith in the system, the Serbian military has already produced a number of combat-capable Milos V1s for field trials and further evaluation. There are 12 vehicles in total, and these are assigned to the 72nd Brigade for Special Operation, where they have appeared in several military exercises. There has even been some international interest in the project. In 2022, the United Arab Emirates arranged for a Serbian delegation to visit the city of Abu Dhabi. Although it had never been intended to operate in a climate like that of the Middle East, the Milos trundled through its demonstrations without displaying any issues at all. As of the time of this video release, the Arabs have not ordered any units, but this may change in the future. 
Ultimately, the Milos is a simple yet innovative use of drone technology that lacks many of the problems inherent in more complicated platforms, especially those capable of flight. Designed to be operated by the average soldier with minimal extra training, the Milos platform neither costs substantially more than a manned vehicle nor demands an advanced logistics network to maintain and support. It is quintessentially a Slavic product, straightforward, practical and unpretentious, focused on doing many things well rather than one thing perfectly. However, time and testing will tell if the Milos is actually worthy of its high praise or is just a case of Balkan overboasting. Thus concludes our look at Serbia's first major foray into a locally produced drone warfare platform. What do you think of the system? Does it have a future as either a mass-produced domestic vehicle or as a licensed export product? Are there any other interesting projects of Balkan military ingenuity you'd like us to cover? Make sure to leave your thoughts below, and if you liked the video, consider supporting us on Patreon. Don't forget to check out Milos's entry on the Tank Encyclopedia website, as well as other articles on similar technologies.